Welcome back to another adventure with Winnie the Witch and her black cat, Wilbur. Now, do you remember what we did the last time? Whenever she waves her magic wand, there are magic words to say. You can say abracadabra. So, let's start our adventure today. Today's book is about the amazing pumpkin. And there's going to be some magic involved. Winnie and Wilbur, The Amazing Pumpkin by Valerie Thomas and Corky Paul. Now, Winnie the witch loved vegetables. I wonder how many of you like vegetables or whether you like the vegetables that she likes. Well, she likes quite a few. She liked broccoli and cauliflower, cabbage and parsnips. She really liked peas, carrots, beans, potatoes and spinach. But her very favorite was pumpkin. She loved pumpkin soup, pumpkin pie and pumpkin scones with pumpkin seeds on top. But most of all, she loved roasted pumpkin. And Wilbur, her big black cat, he loved pumpkin too, especially pumpkin soup with lots of cream stirred in. So every Saturday morning, Winnie and Wilbur would hop on her broomstick, Wilbur would jump on her shoulder, and they would zoom off to the farmer's market to buy their vegetables. That was easy, but it wasn't so easy coming home. It was hard to balance on a broomstick with a cat and pumpkins and lots of other vegetables. Oops, Brussels sprouts and tomatoes were raining down on the market. Splat, squelch, not a good plan. But, blithering broomstick, said Winnie. She had a brilliant idea. I'll grow my own vegetables, she said. So Winnie dug a big vegetable patch in her garden and Wilbur helped. Do you see him sitting on the side, supervising? Not really getting his paws dirty though, is he? She planted lots of vegetables. She watered the plants and pulled up the weeds and Wilbur helped, or at least he told her where to put things. But do you see who's hiding behind the fence? Rabbits. Rabbits are not a good idea for gardens. You'll find out why. But the plants grew very slowly. And when they did grow, the caterpillars and snails and rabbits ate them. Oh dear, said Winnie, gardening is hard work. And I know a lot of you have gardens at your school or at home and you know what the work is. I'll try a spell to help my garden grow. So she waved her magic wand and shouted, Abracadabra! But nothing happened. Oh, bother, said Winnie. That didn't work. I better go and look at my big book of spells. So Winnie went inside just a minute too soon, though, because outside the spell began to work and they were growing and growing and growing. Inside, it was very dark, and Winnie tripped over Wilbur. Meow! Oh, I am sorry, Wilbur, said Winnie. I didn't see you. It's so dark. There must be a storm coming. She looked out the window. It wasn't a storm. It was Winnie's garden. The vegetables were growing so fast they had covered all the windows. I better go out and stop the spell, Winnie said. But the door wouldn't open because an enormous cabbage was in the way. How is she going to get out? Oh my goodness. Well, Winnie rushed upstairs, climbed out of the bathroom window and slid down a giant beanstalk. Wilbur climbed down behind her. This is fun, he thought, until he met the giant caterpillar. Oh, yeah, oh. I don't think he's very happy about that. 
Everything in Winnie's garden was enormous, gigantic, stupendous. A beanstalk was growing all the way up to the clouds. The cabbages were as big as cows. The rabbits were bigger than cows. An immense pumpkin vine was curling around Winnie's house. And there on the top of her house was a huge pumpkin. Oh no, shouted Winnie. The pumpkin's going to squash my house. She waved her magic wand, but just as she shouted, Abra! Crash! Kadabra! The giant pumpkin crashed to the ground. Winnie's enormous, stupendous garden shrank back to the way it was before. But the pumpkin that had broken off the vine did not shrink. It was still a massive, monstrous, amazing pumpkin. What would she do with that? Oh, Winnie has an idea. She chopped a door into the pumpkin, and then she made pumpkin pies, pumpkin scones, pumpkin soup with cream for Wilbur, which he liked very much, and an enormous dish of roast pumpkin. But there was still a lot of pumpkin left. What could she do now? If you guessed about inviting friends, you're absolutely right. She put up a sign, free pumpkin, help yourself. And people came with their bowls and their baskets and even wheelbarrows. And soon the pumpkin shell was empty. And they all went home to make their special pumpkin desserts. What shall I do with this pumpkin shell now? wondered Winnie. It would make a good house, but I already have a house. Let's think. One of my friends once changed a pumpkin into a coach. Can you think who that was? If you guessed Cinderella's fairy godmother, you were right. But she made that for a special occasion, and the horses might be a bit of a problem. Then, when he had a wonderful idea. Oh yes, that's exactly what it looks like, of course. So she waved her magic wand and stamped her foot and shouted, Abracadabra! And there in Winnie's garden was a bright orange helicopter. Oh my, I wonder what she's going to use that for. Can you guess? Where was she going on her broomstick at the beginning? You are right. So now when Winnie and Wilbur go to their farmer's market, Winnie can buy as many pumpkins as she likes. And flying home in a helicopter is lots of fun. Except I think she bought too many pumpkins still. That astronaut better watch out. And that is the end of our enormous pumpkin. But look what's on the end pages of this story. Here at the end, and here at the beginning, children just like you have drawn, they drew pictures of all of the adventures that they can imagine Winnie and Wilbur having. Some of the stories are written but some are stories that they made up. And you could do the same thing by coloring a picture of a new adventure for Winnie and Wilbur to go on together. Have fun.